Welcome to the course of Lead Generation Mastery. You've made a wise decision to join this course, Lead Generation Mastery. Let's explore all the techniques on how to increase your mailing list and how to make profits from the mailing list you build up. Here is the overview of Lead Generation Mastery. First of all, what is a lead? You might have heard about this before from internet marketers, but do you understand what it is and how it can be a benefit to you? A lead is a person who signs up to your site or newsletters who is interested in your offer. As you get more leads, this will grow into a list of email addresses, which you can then send the newsletter or sales letters to promote your upcoming events or products to your subscribers. I will discuss about this in detail in latter modules. A lead is very important to an online marketer who wants to promote a new product. It helps to pre-sell the product to the subscribers. It is a way to connect with a targeted audience who would want to know more about your products. By sending them the pre-sell content, they would stay informed on your products and offers that might interest them, which eventually leads to a purchase. Besides, a lead is a very useful and powerful tool an online marketer must have when it comes to affiliate marketing. Again, I will discuss about affiliate marketing in detail in the latter modules. I am pretty sure that you are wondering what affiliate marketing is, especially if you want to start an online business. A high number of leads would result in a higher chance of conversion, from prospects to buyers. Therefore, it is a vital part of internet marketing. In this course, I will teach you how to build your leads step-by-step step, starting from how to create a bribe offer to attract subscribers to your landing page. Next, we'll go on to creating a high converting landing page or squeeze page for the subscribers to opt in. Once you have built your list, you need to know how to write follow-up emails and keep track of your subscribers. A small list might not be enough to earn a huge profit. In order to increase your list, you can buy email solo ads from the other marketers. This will be your stepping stone to ad swaps. Another surefire way to generate your leads are from Facebook, the world's largest social network platform. Once you have gathered and increased the size of your list, you can now do ad swaps with other marketers. Then, we'll talk more about using Google AdWords to generate leads. Have you noticed there are some blog sites with a small logo with the word ad beside the links? That's AdWords. Right after that, in the next module, we'll talk about 100% commission offers. This is one of the fastest ways to generate a huge mailing list by giving out a 100% commission offer to your affiliates. I will show you how to add your offer on other people's thank you page as well. This way, you will gain exposure and increase your credibility among other marketers. Once you've gained the exposure, the next step is to join giveaway events. Usually, you need to have at least 1,000 subscribers before you can participate. The traffic generation strategies will help you get to your first 1,000 subscribers soon enough. And then you can begin to learn the art of search engine optimization, or SEO, to get more traffic to your site. This is a term you often hear from other online marketers, and I will show you what SEO is in this module. There will be three bonus modules in this course to enhance your skills in building your lead. The three bonuses will focus more on how to make a profit by using the mailing list you've built through all the techniques. We'll talk about how to optimize your lead generation, how to monetize your mailing list, and lastly, how to write profit-pulling emails. Are you ready to dive in? You can print the checklist and mind map provided to keep track of your progress with me. I will see you in the next module. In the first chapter of Lead Generation Mastery, I will talk about creating a bribe offer to generate leads. Albeit the intimidating name, bribe, it is not exactly what it implies. Bribing, in the context of lead generation, simply means that we give something to the user in exchange of their email address. It is a free gift to help give the users a push to include themselves in your mailing list. What is more attractive than free stuff? Free gifts could be anything. It could be in the form of a free ebook where users get it after they opt in their email address. The ebook will then be sent to the users through the email they provided. This is called permission marketing. Some would offer a free course as a gift. 
the free course would be in any topic of your choice and be in the form of video, audio, or textual. Or, in exchange for their subscription, you can provide them with a membership pass to access gated contents. Gated contents are exclusive contents on your website that can only be accessed by authorized users, in this case, members. Creating exclusive contents is a great way to pull in leads. These exclusive contents should pique the audience's interest. The concept of bribing is easy to do. However, it would attract freebie hunters who would subscribe to you and unsubscribe once they get their free gift. On the internet, it's very common. We do not want them to just take the gifts and leave. There are ways to keep them in the mailing list. One of the ways to keep them is to set terms and conditions in order for them to obtain their gifts. A condition worth considering enforcing is to only allow them the gifts only after a month of subscription. This would keep them subscribed longer, and before you can give them the free gifts, you can build up a better relationship with the subscribers. Another optional way to keep your subscribers is to offer them monthly gifts. From the day they subscribe, you can provide free gifts for them every month. It can be promotional offers, free content, and many more. Keep this going, and subscribers are sure to stay subscribed to you. Welcome to Lead Generation Mastery. This video will tell you about arguably the most important aspect of lead generation, which is how to create a high converting landing page. What is a landing page? A landing page is a welcome page for your online visitors. It displays an overview of what your website is about. It is where a form is provided where they can fill in their details such as name and email address if they choose to subscribe to you or become a member of your website. If they are a member of your website, it is where they sign in. The landing page is not just a decorative welcome doormat for your guests. It is an invitation for them to knock and enter. Let's jump into the key points on how to make a landing page that ensures high conversion. A landing page should be simple and precise in every aspect. The instructions on how to fill in forms for the users should be clear. The copy for the landing page must be succinct and understandable. Every aspect of the copy must be taken into account including the copywriting, fonts, placements, and text sizes. The design for the landing page must also be eye-catching. A cluttered design would be a big deficiency as it would only annoy the users and they'd choose to divert away from the landing page. An eye-catching design must include the placements for the body copy, images, and the fields. Exits from your landing page should be limited. It's best to just put one skip button at the bottom of the page. It has to be vague and small but not totally obscured. If the user was given a lot of options to exit the page, it would be like encouraging them to ignore adding themselves into your mailing list. Did you notice that when you close a tab for landing page, there is a pop-up box to stop you from leaving the page? That is also one of the ways to limit exits. A call to action is imperative in every page that requires the user's response. A call to action can vary in whatever ways you want. It can be tweaked and customized to befit the approach you have for your target audience. For example, if you are running a sports page, you can say something athletic like, Sign up and get ahead of the game. Your call to action should not be too generic and plain. In your body copy, make sure that when you are writing, your focus is on your audience. Talk about what they can gain instead of just telling them about your company and services. It's okay to display your success and referrals, but find ways to relate that to the audience. When designing your landing page, remember to look at it through the eyes of a new user. Another way to entice your visitor is to give them a great offer if they sign up to your mailing list. It promises a higher conversion rate, especially when you provide irresistible limited time offers. With the internet made accessible through mobile devices, it has become a preference and most people would choose to browse through their mobile instead of desktop and laptop. In fact, people spend most of their time on mobile devices than any other medium. Almost all websites are mobile compatible now, and there's no reason that yours should be excluded. Make your landing page compatible for mobile. Your website should be as convenient as possible. Your landing page must load quickly. With the speed of the internet improving exponentially, it's to no surprise that users tend to be more impatient in waiting for a page to load. If the page loads too slowly, that user would be distracted and leave your page. 
even though graphics and design play a vital role, they must be limited if they cause the slow loading of the landing page. The fields in the form in the landing page must also be limited. Don't tire the user by asking them to fill in a lot of details in the form. All that you need is just their email address and name only. If the landing page is full of empty fields, it would look cluttered. The last thing the user wants is to fill in tedious forms. Finally, after you've prepared a landing page, you would of course then want to track the conversion rate so that you would know how to improve and remove elements that are not beneficial. The springmetrics.com website is a good way to monitor your conversion rate. Google Analytics is also a popular choice as it is dependable and free. Getting the email address of the users is achievable by the methods we've already covered. However, a conversion rate can be improved by sending out follow-up emails. In this segment of Lead Generation Mastery, I'll be talking about follow-up emails and how to compose them. What are follow-up emails? They are serial emails sent out to unresponsive audience. Once you've gotten the email address, you can segment them into two. One group is responsive, while the other one is quiet. Follow-up emails are for the ones who are not responsive. They are composed and sent serially to this group to remind them to act upon your call to action. Some of the subscribers do not ignore the emails on purpose, but instead are too busy and forget about their subscription. These follow-up emails serve as a gentle reminder to subscribers that did not make any actions following their subscription. To write a follow-up email, the first thing you need to have is a captivating subject line. That is the first thing the audience will see when they receive an email from you. You must convince them to open the email and not ignore it, which is why you need to have a captivating subject line. One that convinces them it is an email too valuable to be ignored. Follow-up emails should also be short and personal. It is best to include the receiver's name in the greeting like, Hello, John. It's important to have that affability in order to appeal them. They also need to be brief. In follow-up emails, a gentle nudge for the audience would suffice. You don't have to include too many offers as that would result in the emails being long. Long emails would bore the receivers and they would ignore them. As the series of emails are sent out, it's important to make the initial context and purpose of the emails to be clear. If they were not clear, the receiver would be confused by what your intentions in sending those emails are. One way of keeping the initial context clear is by mentioning the same purpose you stated in your first email. Or you can even use the same thread. In your follow-up emails, you should also remind them that they are inactive. In fact, that should be the first thing you mention in the emails. Tell them that the response is needed. It's good to let them know that you acknowledge their subscription and are waiting for them. Lastly, one of the most effective ways to engage with the users is by creating an engaging story. This story should then be separated into different parts so that each email will have a captivating buildup that will make the readers be engaged in it. Plus, when your emails are coming in, they are not just bland promotional emails. They must create excitement. These follow-up emails should be scheduled. All the follow-up emails should not be sent all at once. They need to have just the right intervals between these emails. If the intervals were too long, the reader would forget what you are talking about. On the other hand, if the intervals were too short, they would not be appealing and readers would easily disregard them. You can choose any number of serial emails. The most ideal number is between 4 to 7. Next. I will be discussing about buying solo ads to further increase your mailing list. Buying email solo ads is another technique in increasing your mailing list, fast and efficient. I will show you the whole concept of email solo ads in this module. First things first, why email solo ads? For startups, it is one of the inexpensive ways to get you subscribers. This way, you can build up the list a lot easier. Hope that with the techniques provided in this course, you can avoid the mistakes most online marketers make. In addition, email solo ads are also a quicker way in building up the mailing list as well. You pay another online marketer to promote your site for you. In other words, you get the subscribers from another existing mailing list from an online marketer. 
Isn't it a lot easier than getting subscribers from scratch? After increasing your mailing list, you can move on to ad swaps, which will be explained in the next few modules. Buying solo ads is just a stepping stone for you before you do ad swaps. You need to pay other online marketers in order to get your email sent to his or her mailing list. You are getting subscribers from another person's list. It is worth mentioning again, it is important for you to get the whole concept of email solo ads to find suitable online marketers, which is in the same niche as you, so that you attract the right group of people to your site. Then you will place the links in your emails to lead readers to your landing or squeeze page. The email writing should be done by you, and then send it over to the online marketer you bought email solo ads from. I will lead you on how to write email solo ads in this module. Follow the simple steps and tips given here, and you will be able to write attractive emails. First of all, brainstorm about an attention-getting subject line. It is crucial to determine whether your email will go into spam or trash without them even opening it. You must always create a sense of curiosity and urgency for them to believe that it will be something good and exciting for them when they open it. Content-wise, keep it as brief as possible. Avoid long-winded texts that annoy readers. You need to be straightforward. Tell them anything you need them to know. Be concise and clear, so that they will know what to do next. You can find solo ads vendors by searching through some websites where most of the online marketers hang out. For instance, Warrior Forum, SafeSwaps, and Solo Ad Directory are some of the websites where you can find vendors. Warrior Forum is a platform where most online events are advertised there, such as the giveaway events, joint ventures, and a lot of other internet marketing events. SafeSwaps is a platform solely for the purpose of selling solo ads and ad swaps. Lastly, Solo Ad Directory is a domain website from Reed Florin. He created a list of top recommendations list of online marketers who provide solo ads. These three websites are just recommendations. There are many other solo ad vendors you can search online. Welcome to another module of Lead Generation Mastery. We'll be exploring arguably the most popular social media platform, Facebook, and how it can help us to generate leads. To get started, you must first set up a Facebook page. Almost all organizations have a Facebook page. It's an opportunity for you to promote your products or services. Above all, it's a communication tool for you to connect with people and expand your reach. The best part of setting up a Facebook page is it's free, fast, and easy. Once you've set up a Facebook page, you must first get followers. There are many ways to do this, including advertising your page on Facebook itself. Whichever approach you choose, just remember that it must bring people to your Facebook page and increase the number of likes. It's important to keep your presence in the social media world. Always keep your Facebook profile updated, be active, and attend to your Facebook page. Remember that it is a communication tool. Some of the users will make inquiries and comments on your page that demand your attention immediately. However, it is not recommended that you make a Facebook post more than once a day. Avoid posting multiple updates in a day as best as possible. All your updates will appear on your followers' news feeds. If you flood their news feeds with your updates, they might choose to unfollow your page. Now that you have followers and you're ready to post updates, Include the link to your website whenever you make a post. Your website should be made easily accessible. This is important, especially whenever you post an image content, for example, an event poster. A pictorial post gets more response and likes than a textual post. Secondly, you must include a call to action in your Facebook page to bring people to your website. In your Facebook About page, you can provide your official website's URL but you can make your web address more visible by including it in your header page. The header of your profile is a custom image of your preference. You can design a header image with the fitting size and include your web address there. Lastly, there was a plugin for Facebook that allows you to provide forms on your Facebook page. This way, you can get the user's email address without having them to even navigate to your landing page. It's direct, it's fast, and it gets results.
We've reached another part of lead generation mastery, where associates play a major part in generating your leads. This method doesn't involve affiliates, but it does involve other online marketers. Ad swapping is exactly what it sounds like. It is where two online marketers swap ads with each other. When you make a deal to make an ad swap with another marketer, you will display their advertisement instead of yours in your website. In return, they would do the same in their advertisement space. One of the benefits you will gain from an ad swap is gaining a new audience from the other marketer, which you've agreed to swap ads with. The other firm has their own audience and subscribers to which you can reach. They would have their own subscribers and frequent visitors, and this is how you can reach out to them. Keep in mind that you are approaching the audience from the other marketer. Hence, your product and the other marketer's product must share similarities of some sort. Their audience is your target audience that you have not been able to reach out to before. By doing an ad swap, you're able to reach that untapped target audience. Furthermore, ad swapping could generate up to double your subscribers, if it's done right. To find another marketer to swap advertisements with, it's recommended to join in ad swap groups. Of course, it is not wrong to approach another marketer who does not express interest but could be persuaded to do an ad swap. However, ad swap groups contain marketers who are interested and ready to do it. Online ad swap groups have quite a number of participants of which you can choose to approach. By joining these groups, you also have the chance to be approached by other interested marketers. Or, a simple search on the internet will bring you to an interested marketer. Most of them will make their intention to ad swaps known among the online community, and you can find them easily. It would then take some time for them to evaluate your relevancy to their product. To make sure that this business venture is lucrative, you have to make sure that you choose the right partner. The most important aspect of all is that their contents and products must be similar to yours. If you are selling something specific, electrical appliances for example, you must choose the marketer who is selling something of the same kind. If two marketers sell two very different things, it would only confuse the audience and throw them off. They would lose interest in your ad. Which is why it's important to have a similar niche. Or, even if they are not similar, they have to be interested in the same thing. The other marketer and you must have the same target audience. Another important aspect in choosing a joint venture partner is to look at the number of users. Remember that an ad swap benefits both parties and one would not want to be taken advantage of. So, the two marketers who have agreed to do an ad swap must both have, more or less, the same number of subscribers or the same reach. If only one firm benefits from the ad swap, then it is not considered to be a successful deal as an ad swap should be a win-win for both parties. If you are having trouble finding a suitable marketer to do an ad swap because your niche is small, there is an alternative way for you to find a suitable partner. You must first find out what interests your audience. The best way to do this is to conduct a survey with a choice of 20 to 30 topics. From these topics, your audience can choose the one that interests them the most. Once you have the results, you can approach the pertaining marketers with your data and propose an ad swap with them. Even better, now you have the data to prove your eligibility. Just like any other advertisements, you need to prepare an attractive headline to pull in your audience. Your headline has to be succinct, as anything long would throw them off. An effective copy is also essential, but this really depends on the space provided. The ad you prepare must coincide with the space they provide. If they only provide a small space, then your ad needs to have a short headline with a short copy. Or sometimes, the other marketer will promote your product via email in which all you have to provide is the link. The call to action and copy will be done by the joint venture partner you made a deal with. There are various ways for this deal to be done, but essentially, what needs to be achieved is that the number of subscribers of both parties should increase. Hi! Once again, welcome to the course. I will reveal to you another reliable way to increase your mailing list in this module by using Google AdWords. This is a common technique used by most corporate companies to boost their websites to the first page of Google search engine by paying for clicks. The increase in traffic to your site will increase your email list as well. 
first things first, you might be wondering what it is. Or if you already have some exposure in this, you may have a rough idea about Google AdWords. But let's revise the idea of Google AdWords before we go further. Keyword Planner is one of the features of Google AdWords offers, which is a useful feature especially for starters. This way, you can get a better set of keywords to start a campaign. Now that you've already decided the keyword for the site, you can then start the advertising campaign. After you've set up everything, your site will appear at the front page of Google. However, the placement of the site, whether it's on the top, bottom, or side, will be determined by Google based on the relevance of the search request. Google AdWords provides you a ranking in the search results based on the relevance of your site to a particular keyword, hence increasing the exposure of your site to a targeted group. As mentioned earlier, AdWords' main function is to bring your link to the first page of the search results. For instance, if the keyword chosen is guitar, Every time someone looks for guitar in Google's search engine, your site will be appearing on Google. Nonetheless, you need to keep in mind not to choose keywords that are highly competitive. Like the keyword guitar, Gibson, Yamaha, and other established and prominent brands will appear before yours. Now, you should have a rough idea on how efficient Google AdWords is and how it can bring traffic to your website. Unfortunately, you should know that good things are not free you need to pay Google for every click that Google drives to your site. The payment method will be based on pay-per-click, which is cost-per-click advertising. To start the campaign with Google AdWords, you need to follow a few simple steps. First of all, you need to register for a Google AdWords account, and it is free. Simply key in your email address and your password. Google will automatically fill in for you if you are a Gmail user. In just a few minutes, you should be in. Next, choose the keywords for your site. There are a few criteria to follow when you are choosing your keyword. It must be relevant to your content. Always put yourself in the user's shoes and for a moment, what will they search? Next, choose your daily budget. You can set the daily budget in Google AdWords. Let's say the cost per click is 10 cents on average and you'd like to bid for 100 clicks per day. Your daily budget will be 10 cents times 100, hence $10 per day. After a period of testing the traffic, you can then change your daily budget on Google AdWords anytime to increase the clicks to your site. Ad rank is something decided by Google to determine the placement of ads. You might be wondering how ad rank works. I will reveal the secret of ad rank now. This is a competition between all the advertisers in Google AdWords. Every user chooses how much to bid on a daily budget. You can make your own estimation on your own daily budget as well. You might think that the higher bidder gets a higher rank, but it's not entirely true. Besides looking at the daily budget you've set, Google also looks at the quality of the sites as well to decide the ad rank. The higher your ad rank, the higher the placement you'll get from Google. Now, you may be asking how to get a higher rank for it. Google does not look at the bid as the only factor to decide the placement of your ad. Google wants to show only pertaining sites in their search engine and avoid advertisers to simply buy over the ad space with irrelevant ads. The calculation of ad rank is the combination of your bid, expected click-through rates, landing page experience, relevancy of site, and ad format. As mentioned earlier in this module, you already have a clear idea on the relevancy of bidding. So now, I will explain to you about the rest of the factors. First, the expected click-through rates is determined by Google based on their prediction on how many clicks they expect to send to your site. Google always makes decisions based on the feedbacks from their users. You can't really control this, but you can increase this by choosing the right keyword. Next, the landing page experience is another important factor that Google emphasizes on. Your landing page must contain relevant and original content, easy to navigate, and of course the transparency of your business. Google analyzes the relevancy of a site by reading the language in your site, and once again, it shows how important it is to choose a good keyword for the search engine. It will determine whether how well your site relates to the search request. 
ad format is how you present your information to the users, such as the phone numbers, side links, websites, domain, and the other headlines. This is all the factors Google will look at under the ad format category. Once you have built your mailing list, you should be able to join giveaway events. This is an exciting event where most online marketers will come together. It is like a year-end event where you clear your inventory by giving away discounts and special deals to the customers. Isn't this exciting? A group of mailing list owners will pool in their individual gift to be given away in the event. It usually consists of free products, membership passes, and a lot more. If you think it is just a usual event to get rid of old products, you couldn't have been more wrong. It is an event that mutually benefits both parties, where the subscribers get their free gifts and you get subscribers in return. Yes, you can increase your mailing list drastically from these events. However, you must have your own mailing list with at least 1,000 subscribers before you can participate in the event. This is where the online marketers in the same niche as you promote free offers to each other's subscribers. Therefore, you must have a list that is more or less the same as theirs. You might not be allowed to participate in the event if you have a low number of subscribers because you wouldn't be able to reciprocate with other marketers with a larger list size. Secondly, you need to prepare your own gifts that you'd like to contribute for the event. Every marketer must have at least one free gift. Lastly, you must have an autoresponder. The autoresponder functions to send the thank you email to your subscribers when they opt in on your landing page automatically. You wouldn't want to send hundreds or even thousands of email manually yourself, right? After you have signed up for an autoresponder, the next thing you need to have is a landing or sign-up page. This does not need to be complicated. Just a sign-up box for the readers to key in their first name and email address will do. This is an easy step that you can do with WordPress. There is a plugin to minimize your work of installing and preparing the form. It is very important you provide the subscribers with a support email address. At least there is someone to refer to if they encounter some problems with the free gift. Attend to your subscribers as soon as you can if you receive feedbacks or complaints from the subscribers. It shows your sincerity, as well as your willingness and commitment to improve your service. Once you are prepared to join a giveaway event, next you need to identify the right event. Quality is important when it comes to these events. An event with good quality leads you to quality subscribers, while leads from substandard events gives you problematic subscribers. Do some homework and researching on the quality of the event you are about to join beforehand. Make sure the partners are cooperative and credible, especially the organizer of the event. You can look them up with any search engine, look at the products and activities they have been involved in, and evaluate the credibility based on the information. In addition, search the past giveaway events by the host and look for the feedbacks about the event. This is to make sure you join a suitable and potential event that can definitely lead you to a pool of subscribers. The next thing you need to do is to look at the reputation of the current event, see if the event attracts credible marketers or not. All the research pays off at the end of the event, so it is worth doing all the research to make sure the quality is good. You will get the other marketers' subscribers to your list. Thus, it is very important to search for a giveaway event with the partners and host in the same niche as yours. If you are in the online marketing niche, you wouldn't want to look for a personal development niche giveaway event. Lastly, you need to make sure it is a limited time event. Do not join a long-term giveaway event. When you join a long-term giveaway event, you will be in the losing end as you would give away free gifts and get very little in return. Once again, welcome to the course. Next, I will guide you on search engine optimization, or SEO, today. This is a term you might have heard about when you learn online marketing, and I will teach you how to fully utilize this powerful tool to increase visitors to your site via search engines. If you don't really know what SEO is all about, let's get back to the basics. The way SEO works is by linking sites together and make them searchable online by using search engines. For instance, search engines such as Google and Yahoo. We often look for answers for any sort of questions from the internet by using search engines. So basically, SEO is the key to your answers. 
In order to get good results in SEO, you need to use the right keyword for search engines to direct users to your site. First of all, the keyword must be relevant to your content. This is probably the most important factor search engines take into account when they evaluate every site. It's better to have a relevant set of keywords related to your site than get penalized by search engines. The next criteria in keyword research is to determine the terms or phrases that are frequently searched in major search engines. Most of these keywords are highly competitive. Many established companies would always do their best to claim ownership over these keywords. Google provides a service called Keyword Traffic Estimator. It is a tool that tells you how many times a certain keyword is searched online. If you don't have the patience to wait because SEO can be a time-consuming process, you can always get traffic directly from Google AdWords. As I've mentioned in the earlier module, since Google AdWords is paid traffic, your ad will be shown at the top of the search results if you meet the quality and have relevant content. There are two types of SEO, on-page and off-page. On-page SEO is easier because you just need to optimize the contents on your site by inserting keywords directly on your web page. Off-page SEO is a little bit trickier. You need to get quality links from other sites to point back to your site. There is a standardized format to do on-page SEO. Make sure you put the keyword in the title once, two to three times in the content, and lastly, place the keyword in your IMG alt tag. You don't need to mention the keyword very frequently in your title and content. It will seem redundant and your readers will be annoyed. The over-repetition would not create a good impression and it would be long-winded. The term IMG alt tag stands for image alt tag. It is a substitution text for an image. If the image cannot be viewed due to some internet issues, technical problem of the site, or the user has disabled images from loading on their browser, it will appear as a text description. When you put keyword in the IMG alt tag in your HTML, your image will appear in the image results page of the search engine. You need to put more effort on off-page SEO because it will be valuable for you to build your own links and increase traffic to your sites, but this is a time-consuming task. But do not give up easily on this. I will reveal some major ways to build off-page SEO. First, build a private blog network to increase your ad rank in Google Search. The private blog network can be extremely effective if you use it correctly. Post your articles in those sites and link to your affiliate sites. You might not get traffic right away, as it is a long-term risk. You must do it patiently to gain the trust of your readers. While you're working on your private blog network, Post some comments in different blogs to promote your affiliate link. Do not spam, as it would leave a negative impression. A few years ago, article marketing worked more or less the same as a private blog network. You post your articles in other sites to increase your exposure to other marketers and readers that are interested in your niche. Now you know how SEO works, but you might be wondering, why SEO? How can SEO help you to build a mailing list? SEO will help drive traffic to your site massively if it's done right. When your traffic increases, more users who are looking for your service could find you easily through search engines, so more visitors will land on your site, resulting in an increase of subscribers for you. Here are some more ways to further optimize and reinforce your lead generation. There are two different ways for you to optimize your lead generation. First, as we've covered in the previous lessons, is through online. The second method is through offline, where our physical presence is needed. Providing a video experience for the audience is a great way to communicate with them. We are living in a visual-heavy time where people are more likely to pay attention to videos than text. You can display a video on video platforms such as YouTube or your web page that would captivate the audience. In this video, you can insert a call to action and invite them to subscribe to your mailing list. A link to a landing page can be provided on the video itself. Or you can have exclusive contents where only subscribers and members could have access. For them to subscribe, they would have to give you their email address, which you can add to your mailing list. From here, you have increased your leads. Why stop only at your online influence? There are a few ways to grow your leads offline. One of them is to attend speaking conferences. Your network can easily expand from these conferences, if you play your cards right. Or, even better, be a speaker. 
you can present yourself to a large number of people at once. Give a good impression, your reach will be widened. It will not only garner leads, it will also exponentially hone your speaking skills and build your credentials. Television and radio interviews are even better. Unlike conferences, they reach different kinds of demographics and connect you to people outside of your usual crowd. But to reach to the level of speaking for television and radio, you need to start in speaking conferences first. Now that you've learned how to increase your mailing list, you might be thinking, what's next? You don't know the real reason of increasing your mailing list. Now you're ready to monetize your list. Let us have a quick walkthrough on how to monetize your mailing list in this module. After a user subscribes to your site through your landing page, you will lead them to a one-time offer. The one-time offer page is where you can offer them your products with a special deal, where they can't get it from anywhere else but only from you. You have to make it really irresistible for them to buy from you. Besides showing them the one-time offer right after the subscription, you can promote the offer once they've downloaded your free report. For instance, offer them your latest product for only $15 where the original price is $30 and give a call to action, get it now or never. They should feel a sense of urgency to buy it. Moving on to the next one, you can earn a commission from other marketers by fully utilizing your mailing list. When you are building your mailing list, you usually pay other marketers to get traffic and subscribers, but now you can offer to do the same. Send traffic and subscribers to other marketers for a fee. You can earn an additional income by selling solo ads to other marketers. The next technique is to place your back-end links at the bottom of your thank you page. A thank you page is where you lead your prospects or subscribers after they've downloaded the free report. For example, when you're at the grocery shop, when you're waiting in line at the cashier, you spot some chewing gum or snacks by the counter and you end up buying it. It's not because you need it, but you bought it on impulse. The thank you page works exactly like this. While your subscribers wait for the confirmation email for the download link of the free report, they can take a look at the other back-end products that might interest them. Keep this in mind because you definitely wouldn't want to miss the chance to make another sale without any additional effort. Affiliate marketing is another income source for your mailing list. You promote products from other marketers or authors and you earn certain amounts of commission. Creating your own products is time consuming, but with affiliate marketing, you get instant commissions. In this module, I will show you how to write profit pulling emails. In the earlier modules, you already know the importance of building a mailing list and the techniques to increase your mailing list. Now, the next step for you is to learn how to write a profit pulling email for your subscribers. A mailing list is useless if you don't have powerful and engaging emails for your subscribers. The format of an email should be standardized. This is crucial to leave a good impression on your readers. In addition, it will be more personalized when they know it's coming from you and your readers will appreciate the fact that you took the time to create a valuable content which is beneficial for them. Here is a standardized format you can follow. Create a subject line, content, call to action, and PS line. By following this format, even without any experience in writing emails, you can write a profitable email. Let's look further into the elements one by one now. The subject line acts as the opener. It is the determining factor, whether your email will be opened and read or if it goes into the trash. But don't worry, just follow the criteria listed here and I can assure you that the open rate of your emails and response from the readers will definitely increase. First, a subject line should not be more than 50 characters. Why? Because the subject line showed in the mailbox can only show so much. Anything more than 50 characters will not be shown, so it's preferable to keep it below 50 characters. Next, you have to answer them, what's in it for me? People usually open an email that is related to their needs. You have to create a sense of urgency for them to quickly open it and make them feel that they would miss something important if they don't. Do not reuse a subject line even after a long time. Keep your subject line fresh every week and stay updated. Lastly, pique the reader's curiosity as it's been proven to be one of the most effective ways to engage them. Moving on to the content of your email, it must be simple and straight to the point. Keep in mind that readers will not spend more than 15 or 20 minutes to read an email. 
Use the simplest word to convey everything you need as fast as possible. Use ASCII characters in writing the emails. The program that comes built in on your computer is called the Notepad. You can write the email in Notepad first and then copy paste it. Take note of this. Keep every line within 65 characters. This is a time tested technique, which allows the readers to read better. To make things simpler, there is a free program you can download from the net called Note Tap. A small little bonus here about the content of your email is always writing pre sell emails. You do not sell in the email campaign yet. The selling comes after they've actually acted upon your email. The email must be able to make them get excited and keep them wanting more of your content or offers. This is the heart of the whole concept of email marketing campaign, the call to action. A bad email will remain unopened and unread. A good email makes the reader open and read, but a good profit-pulling email makes the reader open, read, and act upon it. Insert your own links or affiliate links at least three times in the email. Put the first link after the introduction, then the second link after the content, and the third link after the call to action. In addition, you can put another extra link after your PS line, but that is it, a maximum of four links in one email. The reason you need to put that many links is to make it easier for your readers. Some of them might not be motivated to click the link after they've read the introduction, or even after the content, but they might be interested to click the link after your call to action. Don't expect them to scroll all the way up again to click on the link. As a result, follow the steps here to put the link in your email. A PS line is an acronym for Postscript Line, which means contents that come after your signature. It is your last opportunity to make your point to promote your product or service. The PS line is the reminder for you to hook the readers for the upcoming events. As mentioned earlier, the email is a pre-sell letter for your upcoming event. Some bonus tips in writing emails here. To sum up the techniques I mentioned earlier, the first tip is to keep practicing. Practice makes perfect. Another powerful human trait that an online marketer must fully utilize is the me factor. There's an age-old question, what's in it for me? The keyword here is me. Remember to answer this question. Speak in terms of you instead of I in your email to make them feel that this email is for them. Continue to the fourth tip. Go easy with exclamation marks. It's a common mistake by most online marketers. They use too many exclamation marks. They assume exclamation marks create a sense of urgency, but in fact, too much of it and it will seem like you are yelling at your readers instead. How do you feel when you see the exclamation marks with red color in this video? This is exactly how the readers feel. Be aware of using all capital letters as well. All capital letters is equivalent to shouting or yelling as well. It doesn't draw attention nor convey excitement. Last but not least, check the spelling and grammar of your emails. Grammatical and spelling errors make your email look unprofessional. That is why proofreading is important. Do not fully rely on the built-in grammar check in Microsoft Word. It doesn't mean it is not accurate, but sometimes it's not completely reliable.